Mark Rogers, TV Talk in Ohio football each and every Wednesday night with Brandon Zimmerman from the Buckeye Battle Cry. So you can listen to the entire conversation live around 730 Eastern time every Wednesday night. It gets posted to YouTube. You can see it there or listen to it on Podbean or iTunes. Just search Mark Rogers TV or we break it down into segments. So we're getting you set for August camp, breaking out each and every position. We've talked quarterbacks. Now let's move it on to the running backs. Mike Weber with a very strong season with just about a thousand yards rushing and um, nine touchdowns, I believe off the top of my head. Uh, I, I don't think that at this point in his career, and of course he's just getting into a sophomore season is he an elite back in the, in the nation, but he's much, much more than serviceable. Uh, off the top of my head, I compare him to LJ Scott, who got away to Michigan State. I think they're pretty similar type players. Uh, your thoughts about Weber's first season, and I know that that you like him to continue the progression here uh, this fall. I think his first season was kind of frustrating for not only Buckeye fans, but probably for him. Uh, there were times where Mike Weber looked like he was one of you know the top five backs in the uh, Big Ten. Uh, there were times where... He didn't, and I don't know if the coaching staff just didn't have their full trust in Mike Weber to be that, you know, 20 carry uh, type of back. Um, it seemed like, especially down the stretch, you know, against Michigan and uh, Michigan State and Clemson, Mike Weber really wasn't getting too many touches. Um, so I, I don't think the trust was fully there from the coaching staff for some reason, but there were definitely some times where Mike Weber looked dominant. And I think it was a great redshirt freshman season for Weber. I mean, he almost rushed for uh, 1000 yards, um, looked really good in pass protection, which is very important for the Buckeye, um, offense, especially when you're following up someone like Zeke, um, and I think going into his redshirt sophomore season, I, as I said last year, Mike Weber, I think, is going to have a big year. I think he's going to, you know, eclipse a thousand yards, get over that 1200 yard mark. I really think the Buckeye offense is going to take a lot of pressure off of JT Barrett running the ball this year. Uh, really have him kind of just focus on throwing because that's what they need from him this year, which means Mike Weber is going to be getting more carries. Um, and the next guy that we talk about will we'll be getting more carries and less from JT Barrett. So I think Mike Weber had a great redshirt freshman season. Um, I think he feels like probably too that it could have been better just because coaching staff kind of bailed on him there at some points. But uh, redshirt sophomore year, I think it's going to be a huge year for Mike Weber. And I know um, Athlon Sports feels the same way where they put him on the first team, all Big Ten, too which is a pretty big deal when you got some pretty good backs in the Big Ten this year. Aside from the Rutgers game when he ran it only 14 times, but for a buck 45 and a touchdown over 10 yards per carry, actually his two best games were against uh, two pretty stout run defenses in the big win at Oklahoma, 18 carries for a buck 23. <laughs> and I know the... <laughs> the thought process concerning Big 12 defenses, but Oklahoma's kind of the aberration. They actually play uh, pretty sound defense and, and produce some NFL players and, and and have some reasonable talent on that side of the ball. And he had a big game against uh, the Sooners and against Michigan State as well in that uh, very, very close win. 14 carries for a buck 11 and a touchdown. He caught 23 passes. He's shown himself to be a capable receiver. He didn't make really anybody miss or create any big plays, so maybe that's something he can add to his game out of the backfield uh, in the receiving game. Demario McCall, we've noticed uh, noted in recent weeks uh, when he has uh, gotten the ball against uh, some porous run defenses. He played well uh, in 2016. He came out as the second-rated running back in the country, third-rated player in the state. Um, Demario McCall is going to have to spell Mike Weber. Yeah, it's... He's going to have to spell Mike Weber, and he's also – well, it's more the offensive coaching staff going to have to figure out what they want to do with him. Um, he is obviously a very talented player. Um, one could probably argue he's probably the most talented playmaker on the um, offense. It's just a matter of where he's going to fit into this Buckeye team. Uh, Mike Weber has um, established himself as a starter at uh, – Early on, the thought was he was going to move out to um, H-back and take uh, Curtis Samuel's spot. 
Uh, I was always kind of iffy about that just because we never really saw him play there last year. We haven't seen him um, catch passes. Fast forward through spring practice and Parrish Campbell's now the perceived starter at the um, H-back spot. So um, he's definitely going to play. Uh, he's going to get carries at um, running back. Like I mentioned before, I think they're really going to pull back the reins on JT Barrett running the ball, which means Mike Weber. And I think that uh, McCall's going to get a lot more carries too. Um, I, I don't think it'll be a 50 50 split between Weber and him, but I think, uh, I think that most of those carries that JT Barrett's been getting the past couple of years will go to Demario McCall. And I, I think he will also see time out there at um, H back. It's just he he's going to be kind of like the guy that we see all around the field. Uh, may not be the main focus of the offense in any game this year, but he's going to be a big part of the offense in the entirety throughout the uh, season. Could the same be said for J.K. Dobbins, a uh, guy that came out uh, here in the 2016 class or 2017 class, 2017 class, who has been listed as an all-purpose back uh, as well, uh, second rated in the country, a top five player in the state of Texas. That speaks volumes, but that's been kind of his MO uh, is that he's the Curtis Samuel and possibly Demario McCall type. Yeah, it's going to be tough for him. I, I know coming out of spring camp, um, it seems like every year we've got a player that Urban Meyer and the coaching staff is just gushing over. Um, we've been hearing it for years and years. You know, first it was Dontre uh, Wilson, and it just goes down the line that there's always somebody that somebody is um, excited about. They're the next great thing for the uh, Buckeyes. Um, as far as J.K. Dobbins goes, right now he's sitting at number three on the depth chart. Um, I honestly would not be completely surprised if they actually redshirted him. Uh, he is very similar to uh, McCall as a player. Um, I just don't know where they would find the carries, um, the play, the playing time for him when you've got Mike Weber um, established as the one. You've got uh, McCall, who would be a one on most other teams already behind Weber. Um, the H back spot looks like it's pretty full there too, with guys like Paris Campbell and uh, KJ Hill. So I know we all kind of are excited with uh, JK Dobbins, um, and how good he looked in spring practice. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of those things where like the coaching staff was really, I'm excited about him, but once the season actually comes along, we don't actually see him play this year. Uh, I, I think there's a very good possibility that. Mike Weber leaves after this year if he has a good season like I think he will, which would then slide uh, McCall up into the starting role. J.K. Dobbins could still be a redshirt freshman. J.K. Dobbins leaves you know, after that next year. So I think thinking long term, um, I don't think it's wise barring any um, injuries this year to waste a redshirt on Dobbins, especially when you got a guy be behind Dobbins who was a four star and another good player that isn't a, a true freshman in Antonio um, Williams. So, uh, I mean, they're all four star guys. They're all highly, uh, highly sought after guys. J.K. Dobbins look good, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's redshirted this year. So you bring up Williams, and around the country, we see freshmen playing at the running back position all the time. Now, not to write off his career at Ohio State by any stretch, because he's only made it through his freshman season, but he's entering his sophomore year. And if he doesn't break into the lineup and get some kind of rotation of carries this year, he's staring at a junior season. And again, it's way too early to write off 2017. But you mentioned his credentials coming to Columbus as the seventh rated running back, according to 247 Sports in the country, a number five top five player in the state of North Carolina. And if things hold to chalk, he's not necessarily going to see much time. No, and and that's why, I mean, it just it, it speaks to volumes of how good the Buckeyes are um, recruiting right now when you've got the seventh ranked um, running back coming out of um, coming out of um, high school, and he was, what, the 2016 class, um, played last year as a true freshman, and now he's talking about being buried on the depth chart and not seeing any time. So um, while I think Dobbins may be a better 
overall player than Williams for the 2017 season. I think Williams is a very good back and um, that's why I just think Dobbins will probably be um, red shirted. Williams will slide up into that number three role, uh, which will still be limited carries. Uh, this is the big year for him. And that's why you wonder if how much the coaching staff t- talked about Dobbins, if it was really just a motivational tool to try to get Williams to take that next step that everyone thinks he, that he, he can make going into this season. So it's an Ohio state running back. <laughs> it seems to be, well stocked for 2017 at the same time if you uh keep count of some of their chief rivals nationally on a recruiting scale look at alabama florida state usc come to mind they are stockpiled with four and five star running backs as well if anything um yeah if nobody gets hurt i think the buckeyes are in great shape if somebody goes down weber being the the most significant case, then they may have a few issues because I don't know that they're necessarily confident with McCall getting a ton of carries or another guy stepping in to get 12 or 15 a game. So it's, so it's yeah, a I mean, position, but it, it could be maybe just one play away from not being so deep. Well, and that's really the story of the Buckeye season uh, this year where it seems like every spot, they've got a lot of talent there that is, not necessarily proven. So the running back spots the the same way. If Weber goes down, everyone thinks that a McCall or Dobbins or Williams could step up, but you never know until it actually happens. And uh, so far, the Buckeyes have been lucky with those type of uh, situations where JT Barrett stepped in for Braxton Miller, Cardell Jones stepped in for Barrett. Um, guys go down, the next person steps up. So hopefully running back would be the same way. All right, we are breaking <laughs> at Ohio State uh, as we head toward August camp. Each and every Wednesday night, we're joined by Brandon Zimmerman from the Buckeye Battle Cry. So join us for the video podcast on YouTube at Mark Rogers TV or go to uh, either iTunes or Podbean to catch the audio version as well. All right, Brandon, uh, you just got us started with the positions and we'll uh, make our way on through here uh, over the next couple months. Appreciate it. All right, thank you, Mark.